Hello guys, welcome to Photographics Academy. All right, so today I'm going to be teaching you how you can quickly edit your outdoor images and make your pictures pop in Photoshop. So without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started. And I'm also going to be saving up the PSD file of everything we are going to be doing, including the color grading, so you can as well download it and see if you can use it in your own workflow. So without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started. The first thing we're going to be doing is to crop our image. So for this one, I'm going to be cropping with my eight by 10. Going to just crop it like this and make sure I have these trees in a straight line over there. Then I'm going to press enter. We're almost done. <laughs> no, we're not almost done. We're just done with the cropping. Then I'm going to, you know, pull it a bit closer and see if there are some blemishes I need to remove now, or I will just fix all of that using my frequency separation. All right, so I think I'm cool with that. Once you are done, the next thing I'm going to be doing is to pull up my Beauty Retouch Academy. All right, so once you have that, I'm going to play my 8-bit uh, frequency separation. I'm going to be keeping this one at 2 because of the resolution of the image. So I'm going to be keeping it at 2. I'm going to go straight to my low frequency, pick up my mixer brush too. So just follow me step by step. You're going to understand Basically, every single thing I'm going to be doing, make sure that all sam sample layers is turned off if you are working on this field layer. But if you're working on an empty history layer, then you need to turn on sample all layers. Then I'm quickly going to just start painting over my image like this. So it's a very simple procedure that I'm doing here. The rule of this is that you should avoid painting your highlights into your shadows and avoid painting your shadows into your highlights. Once you are, you have a proper understanding of this statement I just made now, you are good to go. Okay, so come over to this part of the cheek. So I'm trying not to spoil her smile line and all of that, because I wouldn't want to lose it entirely from the image. So I'm going to as well work on this arm. Just make sure you take your time and do this well. So for the purposes of the video, I'm trying to uh, see if I can speed it up and I wouldn't want to skip any process in this one. I wouldn't want to fast forward it for you. So I'm just going to do it as quick as we can, but make sure you take your time and get it right for your own. Okay. See how beautiful that area is already looking? So it's very important as a retoucher that you master your frequency separation and be able to use it to even out on even skin tones in your image and as well bring your image to life. Very, very important. Okay, so I'm going to also apply that on her dress as well just to make the dress look a bit smoother. So this is also one of the ways you can even smoothen out your dress in Photoshop. If you have a wrinkled dress, you can just run the action and use it to smoothen out that particular area that is wrinkled or rumpled, and you are going to be good to go. See the way the clothes is now looking like it's ironed. But I'm not going to remove all of them because it's going to start looking quite unrealistic. All right, so the next thing we're going to be doing is to even smoothen out her skin a little bit more and to do that i'm going to be using this action over here it's called remove body and facial hair i'm going to keep it as low as anything from one below okay i think one is going to work but let's just drop it slightly low 0 0.8 then i'm going to keep my cushion below at five i believe that is going to give us a smooth skin all right so i'm going to pick up my normal brush and make sure my flow is quite high uh, use a white mask and just paint over her skin. Just like that. And you're already achieving a very smooth image. That still looks very realistic. I think I'll just apply that on her face and on her arm over here. I wouldn't want it all over the body because I like the way these places are. Except for here. So I could just... Use it to smoothen this area out a little bit. All right, so we are good to go 
with the skin retouching. So this is a very, remember I said it's going to be a very quick way you can edit your outdoor images. So the next thing I want to do is to affect the colors. And to do that, I'm going to go into my filters. So I want to just make the colors pop, make the greens pop, make the reds pop, and even make the skin tone pop as well. So we'll go straight to our camera roll. And let's see how we're going to do that. Okay, so once your image is open in camera raw, one of the first things I would do is I'm going to go into the color mixer so I could target the individual colors and pop them up as much as I can. So if you look over here, you're going to predominantly see a lot of greens. So if you take the green saturation area up, you're going to notice that it's going high or it's going low. So remember, I want to pop the colors. So I'm going to pop the greens up a little. Then I'm still seeing some yellows. So if we pop the yellows, they are going to as well shine but i want the whole bag to look more like it's uh comprised of a lot of green leaves so what i'm going to do is i'm going to heal the yellows towards the greens so that it's all start looking like we just have green grasses behind her so the next thing i want to pop is her dress which is red so if you take this place up you're going to notice that it's targeting practically almost just the red but be careful because her skin is also being part of it but of course it's focusing on the reds more so i'm just going to target just the reds a little then i'm going to go to luminance and tone it down a bit so that gives us that deep wine red uh hue of red so we'll just make sure we we'll have a very good red then i would have uh, increase my orange but i wouldn't want to do that here because of the way it's going to handle the whole area i like the color pops i have here already then you can now go down to your calibration and increase the saturation of the blues you are going to notice that the colors are popping even more than it was initially so i like it here remember we are going for all poppy colors so this is beautiful we can go back to our basic and try to even push up a little bit of the vibrance check if our uh if our color temperature is right i think i prefer it the way it was then i'm going to bring in a little bit of vignette effect just to calm the whole thing down and bring the attention towards the middle of the frame okay so once you do that you can as well play with your highlights to see what it does for your image see if you can open up your shadows a little so if you're opening up your shadow make, make sure you're adding a little bit of clarity and contrast to also uh, make your image have 3d dimensionality as well then you can press ok so once we are done with this the next thing we want to do is to intentionally color grade her skin and how do we do that we are going to make a selection of our object all right so we have our object selected of course we are going to go a bit closer to make sure we have a good selection so i'm just going to keep up my lasso tool Okay, so if you look over here, we missed, Photoshop missed this area. So we're going to just manually add that up. Same thing here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just going around the image to make sure I have a good selection because it's very, very important for the next steps we are going to be taking. Okay, I think this worked except for this area. So I'm just going to minus this area. All right. So once you are done doing that, double uh, drag your background into this plus icon to make a duplicate of your background. Then right click and go to layer via cut. So now we have our background on a different layer and our object on a different layer. So first of all, let's work on our object. So I'm just going to introduce a solid color adjustment layer, something that will leave us with a very warm, uh, saturated skin tone at the end of the day. Let's see how this works. Press OK. So I'm going to close that, make a duplicate of my main object, create a mask for it, go to select, go to coloring. So this is actually my favorite way of selecting skin tone. It does the job perfectly for me. So I just have to make a little adjustment at the end of the day. So the reason you are seeing her hair inclusive in the selection is because her skin and her hair practically have the same 
color. So that's why it's also selecting her hair. So I just use the mask and replace the solid color mask and boom, we'll have it on her skin and every part that looks like the skin. So we can decide to even put it in soft light immediately. But before we put over to soft light, we'll first of all put it in color. So why are we putting it in color? So that it gives us a uniform skin tone across the whole image. So once we have a uniform skin tone across the whole image, we can now uh to make a duplicate and change the second one to soft like to get that saturated look that we are looking for so i'm just going around to make sure uh the mask is properly selected that we are not missing out on any area that is why you see me zooming into brush so at this point you can as well decide if you don't want it on the hair or if you want it on the hair but to avoid everything looking flat i'm going to remove it from the hair all right so now i can reduce the the opacity or the fill then after doing that i'll make a duplicate of the same layer and change the second one to soft light so now we'll have a saturated skin tone so looking at the overall image i feel the background needs to go down a little bit in terms of depth of field to even bring more attention to my image so how do i fix that remember i already have my object on a separate layer so i'll just reload the selection of the background go into my filter go to blog gallery pick up my tilt blur so that i will give it that kind of lens blur effect so once it's loaded drag this all the way down of course your object starts focusing from down then it starts changing in depth and all of that so i'll just push it out a little bit out of focus i like that then make sure that all these areas are in focus nice then press ok so if you notice i didn't do too much i just pushed it out a little so that we'll have more attention on our image and still looking at it i feel it's also still competing with my image so the next thing i could do is to reduce the luminosity so that my image becomes the brightest part the brightest part and immediately it's standing out because every other place is dark except where my image is so this, these are the ways you can even work on your background to make them pop out and separate your objects from your background still maintaining that realistic feel one more thing you can do this is not necessary i don't even know if i'm going to apply it at the end of the day but let's just see how it looks is to apply a different uh color lookup on the background so because of that color shift and color change it gives because of that color shift and the color change, it gives us some separation from the image. So looking at this, this is so nice, but we can as well reduce the opacity to make it look very realistic. To avoid it looking like we are now compositing the object into the place, so we'll just tone it down a little. So remember, all the idea is to make sure that our object is the main focus. So lastly, I'm going to apply a global color gradient. Two things I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my gradient map, load up my legacy gradient, go to my photographic toning, and pick anything warm. Remember, we are working on a warm uh kind of team so we'll just pick anything warm change the blend mode to soft light then reduce it yeah of course reduce it to make it look realistic i think this is still too much so looking at the image now i still feel her face is not standing out so i'm going to one more thing brighten up her face just a little using my mask and brush so just paint over her face don't need it on the arm just the face nice okay probably on the leg as well for that realistic uh, lightening feel you can also brighten up the place she's standing just this area <sighs> we'll remove it from the leg as well okay so of course we're reducing that nice so the last thing we are going to do is to apply a cooling filter to tone everything down and give us that final look so go to our cooling filter look at the way it's looking but of course it's too much we reduce that so let me take a snapshot of everything we've done all right this is our history so this was the image when we started working oh my god what a transformation and this is the image after just few stuffs the before the after so make sure you download your psd file play with your own color gradients we'll have everything we used in the image including the color grading the layer styling the curves the the solid color adjustment layer everything is in the p 
PSD file. So make sure you download your own, apply it on your own images. Let's see the kind of result it gives you at the end of the day. Thank you for watching this amazing video and do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have subscribed, make sure that your notification bell is on so that you get notified every single time we drop a new video. Until then, see you on the next one.